Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. It occurred to me that I haven't done just a sit down chatty video about books and reading and writing in quite some time. I used to do them but somehow for some reason or other I stopped and I thought well why not do another one of those see whether you like them um, and if you do then I might you know, pick up um, this kind of video again and do it more regularly. Not, not, not like every week, <laughs> don't worry, but I don't know, maybe once a month or something. So let me know um, down in the comment whether you enjoy these kind of more, you know, casual chatty videos. Um, and I was thinking about the stuff that I could talk to you about. And of course, it most of what I do has something to do with books. Um, if you're following me for some time, you know that I also write books. I've published a couple of them and I've just finished, or just, it's beginning of the month in January, I finished the first draft of a new novel and sent it to my, my editor and I received the, what they call, editorial letter uh, in May. Um, the, an editorial letter is... Um, uh, a summary of what the editor thinks of the book and addressing certain points that he, in my case, he uh, thinks that change. So in other words, it's a letter saying the book is fantastic, but you will have to address this and this and this and that. Um, my editor uh, is is fabulous and he he has the the the, the capacity to tell me like 10 things that I need to address and still make me feel like the book is fantastic. So anyway, I received this editorial letter in May um, and then I stalled. I started editing, revising, and then over the summer, sometimes, somehow August and September, they, they just got away from me with other stuff. In August, it was too hot to work. That That is my excuse. And in September... Um, I had a lot of other things going on because obviously I don't earn enough money uh, with my books to live uh, on the royalty, so I have jobs as well. I'm a, a professor at the university in Maastricht, which is a town in the south of uh, Holland, and I'm also working at the Dutch National Human Rights Institute. Um, so somehow in September, these two jobs took so much of my time for some reason that I didn't really work on the book. I mean, it's just an excuse, you know, I had enough time. But anyway, I've, I've gotten back in the groove of um, revising and I have a meeting with my editor mid-November and I hope that I can send him at least part of the book, revised version of, of the book before that. Um, so one of the things that I would want to talk about in these chatty videos is my writing. But I'm not sure whether that's at all interesting. If you have questions about my writing process or things you would want me to talk about, uh, or if you don't want me to talk about that, also let me know down in the comments. One thing that I can certainly say um, is if you are interested in writing, you should get yourself a writing group, which means couple of people, two, three people who also are in the process of writing something and then you send each other chapters in regular intervals and you give each other feedback, positive feedback. I mean not feedback in the sense there's a spelling error in the second sentence in the third paragraph, but the overall impression and what kind of questions they have or what they like or where they thought, I, I don't know why you did this. That helps immensely, and I'm really, really grateful that I have such a writing group. Um, and it's two booktubers. It's Mel from uh, Mel's Bookland Adventures uh, and Jess from Garden Scriptorium. Jess hasn't uploaded in a while, but she is really busy at the moment. She's a university professor, but I'm, I'm sure that she will come back. Now, won't you, Jess, at some point or other? So what we do is Jess writes historical fiction and Mel is working on a sort of gothic mystery um, and we send each other um, a chapter or two 
um, every other week on Friday, and then on Sunday we talk on Voxer and give each other feedback. And and that's that. It's really fantastic. First of all, because you have this benevolent eye looking at your writing, uh, but also because it gives you a little bit of. Sometimes I need it at least a kick in the butt because I do have to send them something every other week. So for me that that works perfectly, and I don't know any writer for whom a writing group doesn't work. So that's a tip that I can give you. And speaking of Mel and uh, her channel, Mel's Bookland Adventure, um, there's another question that I was thinking about recently and I thought I'd discuss it with you. And that's how um, we as content creators should um, deal with comments that are Mm, bit rude, maybe. <laughs> I mean, if it's just a troll and if the, this is really a, a you know a, a sexist or racist remark, I just delete the comment and block the user. But sometimes you have commenters who um, whom you know already a little bit because they have commented regularly, and that was always quite nice. But at a certain point you receive a comment like Mel did on her uh, Monday check-in when she discussed um, Margaret Edwards' The Testament and not in a favorable way. And I did a review on Edward not in a favorable, favorable way either. So we received um, comments that I considered rude, you know, telling us that it's probably because we are German, we don't understand the humor and the subtlety of the novel. Um, telling me that I just misunderstood it completely. <sighs> we tried to engage with that commenter in, in the discussion, but of course it then escalates and I blocked the the commenter from, from my channel. Um, but I, w I was thinking a lot about that, how, you know, how you address that, because I think I, I love discussions about books. Um, not only with people who agree with me, but in particular with people who disagree with me, because it it broadens your horizon if you get a different point of view. So it's not the fact that somebody disagree with me that doesn't sit well, but the way somebody addresses that disagreement. And for me, it's a big difference if somebody tells me, I completely disagree, I hated the book when I loved it, or I loved the book when I hated it, and for that and that and that reason. That's a discussion you can have, but I, it really irks me if people uh, make remarks like, you know, you are German, so you are too stupid to understand that book, or telling me that I misunderstood it, that they know what the book is really about, and I, d I don't. I don't think that makes for a valid discussion, but let me know what you think. I mean, I'm really lucky with my uh, subscribers and viewers and commenters because I rarely have to deal with that kind of stuff. So anyway, what else? Reading, of course. Uh, a chatty video is also about what are you reading at the moment? And of course, it's Victober. Um, so I'm currently reading uh, two books that one certainly qualifies for Victoria, the other one a little bit. Um, let's talk about the, the last one first, and that's Laura Purcell's book, uh, The Silent Companions. I'm buddy reading this with Doris from All the Books and Terry from Miss Terry B. And it's not a Victorian novel because it was published last year, but it's set in Victorian England, and it's a, a kind of a gothic tale of a young widow, Elsie, who goes to um, her husband's dilapidated estate. Um, she's pregnant, and then she, in, in a sort of a hidden attic room, she finds this, yeah, it's almost like a, a wooden puppet, and that's the silent companion, and 
then some ghost Victorian ghost stories going on. So I'm, I'm just I have just started the book, but I'm I'm really excited, and I count it for Victoria because it's set in Victorian England. The other book I'm reading is also Buddy Read with Sean uh, from Sean the Book Maniac, and that's a real Victorian read, and that's Wuthering Heights by. Uh, written by Emily Bronte, of course, uh, published in 1847, just one year before Emily Bronte died, and it's the only novel she ever published. Um, for both of us, Sean and me, it's a reread. Um, I've read um, uh, Wuthering Heights, I think, two or three times, uh, but it's a long time ago, decades ago, when I was really young, in my late teens, early 20s, and I read it in German at the time. So it's my first time reading it in English. I loved the book uh, back then. Sean loved the book back then. And so far, we are about halfway. We still both love it in different ways, obviously, because we are older um, now. But um, I, I, I'm, still, I'm still loving it. So, But I will talk about it, of course, in one of the more, you know, professional videos in which I talk about books in a very nuanced and intellectual way. <laughs> anyway, and the third book I'm I'm reading, um, it's unusual for me, by the way. But normally, what I like to do is just read one book from beginning to end, and then read the next book. But with Buddy Reads, you have a certain schedule, so I always have one book on the side if I do a Buddy Read that I pick for myself and that I read in my own pace. And to sort of balance these uh, serious reads, um, I picked um, a crime novel. And it's also a reread for me. Uh, Patricia Cornwell's first book in the K. Uh, Scarpetta series, Postmortem, published way back in 1990. Uh, and the reason that I picked up this book is because I, uh, in my last video, the uh, to be released books in October, um, I f featured a book, a new book by Patricia Cornwell, a new series she started, uh, Quantum. And when I talked about that book, I thought, well, I, I, I really want to reread um, uh, some of her older books. So I picked the first one in this uh, Kay Scapetta series. Uh, Kay is a um, forensic um, investigator, uh, so she does postmortems. Um, and I thought, well, why not pick up this one? So Postmortem is one of my current reads. And it, it's, I'm about halfway. I think I will probably finish it today. And it's fascinating because the book, a lot of the technical stuff of the book is so outdated. And it, for me, that isn't a bad thing. Um, but it makes me think about the fact how much has changed technically in forensic science uh, within the last 1919, last three decades, because DNA just started back then. And it's, it's hard to imagine um, how different it was. Computers, you know, you had floppy disks and, and stuff like that. Uh, you didn't have Internet. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so far and I'm enjoying it. And with like with all the other books, I will talk about it more profoundly and intellectually in one of my recent reads or a tops and flops. Um, so that's what I'm reading. Uh, what else is going on? It's really fall fall weather now, which I love. Fall is my favorite season, as long as it's not really cold and really dark. We will have the the switch from summertime to wintertime the last weekend in October, and that period when it's getting dark early, like, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon, until uh, the 21st of December, when the winter solstice happens, and then it switches back again. That's always a, a kind of a moody time for me, because I, I, as much as I love the fall, I don't like it when it's getting dark soon, uh, early. So anyway, I promised myself a chatty check-in shouldn't be longer than 15 minutes, and I'm about 14 and a half minutes in, so I'll just stop here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this chatty check-in. Let me know whether you want me to do this more regularly. Talk to me down in the comments about your chatty stuff, and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.